On our channel, we've talked about a lot of niche games that have surprisingly dedicated esports scenes. But today, we want to take it a bit further and look at a couple of games, or even programs, that'll have you asking, how can this possibly be an esport, or maybe even just have you questioning what the heck you're looking at. Starting things off, well, we have the potential for some very heavy rain tonight. Let's kick things off with the roguelike third-person shooter, Risk of Rain 2. The single-player and co-op game features characters and item builds that can get completely out of hand. It features insane mods, like Ganondorf from Super Smash Bros. Hey, this is a bad idea. <laughs> and it boasts hours of challenges and replayability. Somehow, this game has also produced a highly engaged competitive scene. Developed by Risk of Resources, this is Loadout Races. In a loadout race, three to four players compete with the same character on the same randomly seated run, with the winner of each round being the player who kills Mithrix, the game's final boss, in the fastest time possible. Every time you die, five minutes gets added to your total time, and after four rounds, a winner is decided. To spice things up, each run is played on Eclipse 8, the game's highest difficulty multiplier, which causes players to suffer numerous debuffs and take permanent damage. Since you can't prepare for a randomly seated run, this isn't your average speed run, and success in this format comes down to decision making. Do you spend more time farming for items? Do you scrap those whites early on in hopes of a good printer? Will a red item make all the difference? Watching the players navigate each level, hearing thoughts from the commentators. Oh, Disputed got Scorpion. And no one else found that yet. Scorpion could be very, very strong for the Mythrix fight. And seeing a race come down to the wire is surprisingly entertaining to watch. Risk of Resources features weekly streamed matches, a website where you can find others to race against, and a super active Discord. If you want to see some good examples of loadout races, check out one of Disputed Origin or Woolly's videos. And if you think you have what it takes to navigate something like this yourself, then head over to Risk of Resources website to learn more and get involved with some races of your own. You know what else is causing a risk of rain? My tears from you not subscribing. <laughs> Our next game is... Killer Queen Arcade is a 5v5 team game that kind of functions like a MOBA platformer. Each team consists of one queen and four workers, with three paths to victory available. Path 1, kill the opposing team's queen three times and win a military victory. Path 2, collect enough berries to fill the hive to win an economic victory. And Path 3, have one of your worker bees ride the snail to the finish line to win the devious snail victory. The worker's main objective is to either ride the snail or collect berries. The queen has a more complicated job. They must kill opposing workers, as well as trying to take lives off of the opposing queen. Too long though to get Turbo out, so Turbo is still stranded with speed as a drone. Uh, Sam waiting for his chance to get out of here. Trying to push- They also have to defend their own workers, all while trying to stay alive themselves. There are also power-up gates that the workers can take berries to to gain one of two power-ups a speed boost which makes it easier to dodge and collect berries, or they can transform into warriors, sacrificing their ability to collect berries and taking up arms to take out the enemy queen and workers. The game is fairly straightforward to pick up and its depth comes from the team's ability to work together. Walking up to one of these cabinets with four of your boys feels like two rival gangs about to go to war. Originally designed for the Come Out and Play Festival in New York, the game was intended specifically as a great social experience, if you want a chance to try it out in person, be sure to check out Bumble Bash 5 this year, which is an annual in-person tournament hosted by the creators of the game that brings people together from all over for this one-of-a-kind gaming experience. The game did have an alternate version released on consoles in Steam called Killer Queen Black, which features improved graphics and revamped gameplay, including online. Unfortunately, after the unforeseen shutdown of Amazon GameSparks, the service the game was built around, it had to be delisted from all online stores. There was talk of making the game open source, but as of now, the game remains unavailable. We hope to see it soar again soon. Next up is Honkai Star Rail. Do you want to go on a space adventure? Yes! For anyone not familiar with Honkai, it's a turn-based RPG gacha game created by Hoyoverse, the same company that made Genshin Impact. The game features a mode called Memory of Chaos, 
where the players are tasked with defeating a set group of enemies as quickly as possible to earn rewards. Each cycle of this mode features a different effect that will change how you craft the two teams you take into battle. It didn't take long before an esports scene cropped up. Content creator Timaeus created a PvP event for MOC where teams of two players compete to see who can complete the final stage of MOC the fastest. And to ensure that you can't just pay to win with a team full of maxed out 5 stars, the mode features a character draft. This includes bans and also assigns each character a point value, which takes into account their overall kit, the number of Eidolons they're at, and the light cone they have equipped. Once the draft is over, depending on how many points each team has, turns are either removed or added to their final score. With Timaeus hosting seven separate tournaments to date, all with prizes of between $2,000 and $4,000 for the winners, it's pretty cool to see a gacha game have an esports scene. Still, this tournament format is pretty niche, even for the most diehard Honkai fans. But if you want to try this out for yourself, Pridewin has built a draft tool on their website where you can also find information about scoring and join their Discord to try this game mode out for yourself. Moving on. What the hell am I looking at? Odds are you've seen this guy before. Japan. Nice. Australia. We'll take it. Maybe you've even commented on one of his videos, calling him a liar, a cheater, and let everyone know that there's no way these trees look different than the ones outside your house. That's right, we're moving on to GeoGuessr. For those who don't know, GeoGuessr uses Google Street View to drop you into a random location somewhere in the world. Once you're situated, you have to guess where you are on the map, with closer guesses netting you more points. Guys like Rainbolt have turned this fun little minigame into a sport. Memorizing geographical and infrastructural facts about literally every country that has Google Street View. Light gray soil. We have light gray soil, very arid climate. I'm gonna go North Botswana here. Blue sticker on a utility pole. Our blue sticker is in France on their telephone poles and ladder poles are in Spain, Portugal, France. It's very, very helpful to learn these different types of poles and what different material each country uses on their telephone poles. Literal dead flies on the camera. It's your road in North Macedonia where there's dead flies on the camera. But Rainbolt isn't the only person who has dedicated an ungodly amount of time to studying highways and blurry photos of trees. GeoGuessr features a PvP mode where players face off against one another to score guesses as close to the actual location as possible. At the highest level, accuracy is incredibly important, as being just a couple of kilometers closer than your opponent can often be the difference between victory and defeat. A little bit farther away, this could be death for Blinky. 5x damage, oh! and oh my god! Does he ever win? He's That's a team! And he's no. standing on him! 500 points. Oh my god. While GeoGuessr has been around since May 2013, the game's popularity skyrocketed during COVID, and by July 2022, the website had more than 40 million accounts. So, in 2023, GeoGuessr hosted the inaugural World Cup for the game, inviting 24 of the best players, representing 21 different countries, to come together in Stockholm, Sweden, to play the game. In front of hundreds of fans in the Space Arena, and with a peak viewership of more than 70,000 viewers, the Dutch Dutch player, Consus, came out on top. Now, as the game continues to grow in popularity, the competitive circuit has become even more fleshed out for 2024, with regional qualifiers taking place in the Americas, EMEA, and Asia to find the 24 players that will compete for the title again in Stockholm. Finally, we leave the realm of games altogether and into that of finances, accounting, and clean sheets. <sighs> That's right, we're talking about Microsoft Excel Esports. Every year, hosted in Las Vegas, is the Microsoft Excel World Championship. This tournament is the culmination of a year-long circuit, which invites 24 of the world's best players to Sin City, Nevada, to crown an Excel champion. The event is even streamed on ESPN. Microsoft Excel Esports athletes are tasked with completing themed worksheets with multiple stages. These worksheets can range from analyzing case studies or complicated financial ledgers to scrubbing mining data from the game EVE Online. Sounds boring, right? Wrong. You couldn't be more freaking wrong. These guys are superstars of the accounting world. They know every shortcut, understand Excel's logic down to the decimal. Their player pictures are ripped straight off of LinkedIn. They're confronted with tasks that look like this and solve it in seconds, pulling out commands you never even knew existed and barely even break a sweat. And if that's not enough to get you hype, 
Microsoft Excel Esports even has its own faker. This is bold. This is bold. Look at him crossing his arms. No, oh, no, wow. no. The guy is flexing. 19, He's flexing. 18, He's flexing. 16, what does he do? What is, 15, look at this guy. Look at 14, no, no. Andrew Nye, nicknamed the Annihilator, is a director at a consulting firm in Sydney, Australia and has been competing in Microsoft Excel since 2018. He's won three straight world championships and heading into 2024, will be looking to add to his resume with a 4 P. All right, that's it for this video. If you wanna check out one of our other countdowns, you can click here to watch our countdown of some of the longest esports matches in history. Shouts out to Cloud, Steph, B, Pass, Shampoo, and Yashiji for being patrons of the channel. If you enjoyed this video, leaving a like, subscribing, and hitting the bell to stay up to date is much appreciated. My name is Jonah, thanks for watching.